This is a review of enzymes, topics 3.1 to 3.3 of AP Bio. Describe the key properties of enzymes. Describe how enzyme activity is affected by changes in the pH of its environment. What's the difference between reversible and irreversible enzyme denaturation? Compare and contrast competitive and non-competitive inhibition. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that deep learning requires interaction and feedback, and we back that up with a money-back guarantee. Describe the key properties of enzymes. Enzymes are usually proteins. There are some RNAs that act like enzymes that catalyze reactions in cells. They lower the activation energy of the reactions that they catalyze, increasing the rate of those reactions. So in this diagram, you see a reaction that's catalyzed by an enzyme, number two, and a reaction that's not catalyzed at number one. And the difference is that the activation energy for the enzyme-catalyzed reaction is much less than the non-enzyme-catalyzed reaction. Enzymes are highly specific because their active site complements the shape and charge of their substrate, which is the substance that an enzyme acts upon. So here's an active site, here's the substrate, this is the enzyme as a whole, it would be a large protein. Here's the enzyme interacting with the substrate, and here we have the products. Enzymes are both highly specific and have a narrow set of conditions where they can function at or near their optimum. Explain. Enzymes are proteins with secondary, tertiary, and quaternary level structures that involve hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, and hydrophobic clustering. Changing pH, temperature, or ion concentration interferes with these bonds, changing the shape of the active site, keeping the enzyme from binding with its substrate. Enzymes, therefore, have a pH, ionic, or temperature optimum at which the shape of their active site best fits their substrate. Environmental change can cause denaturation, a change in the shape of the enzyme that lowers or completely negates enzyme function. Describe how enzyme activity is affected by changes in the pH of its environment. Most enzymes have a pH optimum where they operate at peak efficiency. Here's the optimum right here. As pH moves above or below, the optimum enzyme performance drops. And this is the rate of enzyme activity, and you can see that as the pH drops, it goes down. As the pH increases, it goes down. Why? It's for all the reasons we talked about in the previous slide. It's that enzymes are proteins. If you change the pH, you disrupt the bonds that hold that protein in its specific shape. The result is denaturation and less good fit between the enzyme and its substrate. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. It's a hard course, but we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Describe how enzyme activity is affected by changes in the temperature of the enzyme's environment. Up to a certain point, enzyme activity increases with temperature, and that's because there's more kinetic energy that increases molecular motion, and it increases the chance that the enzyme will bind with its substrate and therefore be able to catalyze the reaction. But at a certain temperature beyond two in the graph, the enzyme will denature. It'll change its shape, reducing the enzyme's catalytic abilities because it'll no longer be able to bind with its substrate. What's the difference between reversible and irreversible enzyme denaturation? Reversible denaturation is where the restoration of optimal conditions restores the enzyme's function as it regains its optimal shape. If you can imagine that an enzyme has an optimal shape at seven, you move it up a little bit, the enzyme starts to denature, but then if you restore the pH, the enzyme shape might go back to its previous form, thereby going back to its optimal rate of efficiency. But irreversible denaturation is where the enzyme shape is permanently changed and its catalytic ability is destroyed. And this isn't exactly with enzymes, but if you think about what happens when you cook an egg, the egg white goes from clear to a solid, and it'll never go back. Even once you cool it back down, that's irreversible denaturation of a protein. Imagine the same for an enzyme. Explain how enzyme activity is affected by substrate concentration. 
With low substrate concentrations, the probability of the enzyme meeting its substrate is low, and the product is produced at a very low rate. As substrate concentration increases, the collision and the reaction rate will also increase, but at a certain point, you get to a saturation point. And at that point, all the enzymes have their active sites interacting with substrates, so there's a peak in the rate and you don't go any higher. Compare and contrast competitive and non-competitive inhibition. In competitive inhibition, a foreign molecule, one that's not part of the cell or the organism, that's not the enzyme substrate, so this is number four over here, blocks the enzyme's active site. And that keeps the substrate from binding, here's the substrate, and that inhibits the rate of the reaction. It's inhibiting by competing for the active site. In non-competitive inhibition, which is shown over here, a foreign molecule, not one that's part of the organism, binds away from the active site at a region that's called the allosteric site over here. So here's the allosteric site, here's the allosteric site that's occupied by this foreign molecule. Binding at the allosteric site causes a ripple effect throughout the protein that causes a change in the shape of the active site Therefore, the substrate can no longer bind at the active site, and that diminishes or blocks enzyme activity. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.